Hello, this is the message to all the streaming platforms, including YouTube and Facebook. Please don't mute the music in my show. All the music used in this show licensed to Frana Music Publishing, and the owner of this company is the guest of my show. All the music used in my show is used purely for entertainment purposes. I do not gain financially from any of this progress. Thank you. My show will start shortly. I am inviting you to watch a new edition of my music and my story show, where I am going to introduce you to my friend and international multi-platinum award-winning songwriter Francesca Ashleman. Her credits include Russian superstar Valeria, who had Billboard Dance Chart number one hit in Russia and number three in UK. Francesca worked with Petula Clark, Jeremiah Jackson of Jackson's Family. Mario Frangulis and many more. She has also co-written with Chris Eaton, Cliff Richards songwriter, late Queen producer David Richards, George DeAngelis, who produced Seal, Rob Fusari, producer of Lady Gaga, and most recently multi-platinum producer Darren Martin on the Georgie K tracks. If you are a music professional, you will love to listen to a fascinating story of her life and to hear her views on the current situation in the music business. I recorded two Francesca songs. Both of them are going to be featured on my new upcoming country album due to be released in autumn 2020. One of the songs Only My Heart Knows was released as a single in 2019 and topped up many European and American country music chats. Enjoy the show. I saw my mom on the front porch with a tear in her eye. It seemed that she had gone back to another place and time. And as it rolled down her cheek like a diamond shining bright I asked her why And she replied When a tear suddenly appears from your soul Let it flow, let it flow Like a river running over a and stones let it flow let it flow and it will lighten your load still the tears kept coming don't know the pain they hide but far more than they healed her deep inside And as they rolled down her cheek Like a diamond shining bright She held me tight And then replied When a tear suddenly appears from your soul
appears from your soul. Let it flow. Let it flow. Francesca, it's so, so lovely to see you. Thank you for taking my uh, call and for agreeing to see me. Thank you so much, Larissa. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Francesca, listen, I just want to um, start because people in Ireland don't know you at all. So um, I want to introduce what you do. You're a lyricist. That's your main profession in music business. Is this or tell yes. I'm a songwriter. But uh, I've been more well uh, in demand and uh, for lyrics. I, I have also my co-writer that transposes. If I want something to change, I just usually sing it uh, through the lyric. But for me, everything goes through the lyric. Yeah, lyrics comes first. Yes, lyrics comes first for me. Yes, first but always. People would want to know, where are you from originally and where are you based? What's your home place? Okay. I am uh, of Greek origin, okay. but uh, I was raised in the United States. And then I left uh, to go to Switzerland, to school in Switzerland. And um, then I stayed in Switzerland. So you're based in Switzerland? Uh, yes. Well, my work is not based in Switzerland because I worked in the UK. Uh, for many years. I was signed uh, with uh, Sony Music Publishing in the United Kingdom and then uh, with Independent Music Group and then I created my own publishing company. What? Francesca, you are one successful woman, aren't you? A, a great example for any women who are watching us in music business because, I mean, it's a top business. Uh, we all, they always say here in Ireland, it's a top business for women to be because it's a bi boys club, they say. Yes. Um, it was, um, it's true that when I started uh, going to the UK to work and collaborate, that um, it was a very closed... Um, okay. you know, this, yes, it was quite closed. But as I had the American background and I was uh, very passionate <laughs> about the work, uh, I sort of, uh, some of the songwriters used to say, I added the, 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 the passion into the, um, into the writing. Well, I mean, you, you can't imagine music being without it, though, isn't it? It's not really a calculated money business as they're trying to to make it. It's not. If there is no passion, it, there is no meaning in music, I think. So you're very right that you like us. Yes. Uh, if, you, if you're if you not passionate about writing music, then you wouldn't be in this business because it's not always an easy business and uh, it's that we are not all, 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 um, often compensated as we should be. And um, But it's the love of of doing what we do, of creating, and uh, so it's um, it's the passion over rules. Yes, it's genetics, isn't it, Francesca? You can't, you can't say yes. I guess I guess you can say it's genetics in a way. Yes. <laughs> How to bring you very back, very very back to the, to the very start of your uh, life and tell me. When you were growing up, did you do any music? Did you study anything? What was your background? Yes. I studied piano. I was on the piano from a very young age, mm -hmm. and um, I I did many years of classical piano studies. All right. So, so that gave me really a back the background for you know for the ear and to hear the 
notes and mm-hmm. and so it was a good basis, a very good base for um uh, writing songs actually. I at the moment I thought it was so tedious doing all these classical music exercises. <laughs> and uh but then later on when I started writing songs I found that um the background of this classical background really was a very good um uh base for um for my work. How did you move them from that the when do you remember when you actually wrote for what your first song? When when did that happen? Oh yes, I remember. <laughs> yes. That was uh, by accident, actually. <laughs> um, I uh, started uh, one day. Uh, a friend uh, said, "Oh, you know, I'm working for a publicity agency." And uh, they asked me to write the lyrics to a jingle in English um, mm-hmm. for Michael Jackson perfume. Oh! But he said my English is not good. This was in Switzerland. Okay. My English is not too good. He said, "Can you help me?" And I said, uh, "Yeah." So let me hear the jingle. So in about 20 minutes, I wrote the lyric to the jingle. Mm-hmm. And then he looks at me and he said, this is great, but this was supposed to be my work. What do I do? I can't say that you wrote it. Mm-hmm. And I said, don't worry. It's not a problem. <laughs> I said, there's just this producer I want to meet that you are working with on uh, uh, music for publicity, that he was a producer at that time that... Uh, was working with um, with uh, David Bowie and um, uh, Freddie Mercury and all these artists, and he was also a musician. And they had a studio in another town in Switzerland. And I said, "Listen, I would really like to meet this uh, producer. Can you get me an appointment? I really..." Ain't high at that time. <laughs> I didn't even believe that he would do it, actually. Mm-hmm. But about three weeks later, he calls me and he says, Francesca, I got you an appointment with this producer. I said, what? <laughs> and he said, yes. I said, how did you do that? <laughs> well, at that time, there was no internet to check people, <laughs> you know, their background. And he said, well, listen, you know, the only way I could get a meeting for you with him was to tell him that you're this really big songwriter that came from the United States and that you're here in Switzerland now and that you want to meet him. (laughs) And I said, what? How did you? He said, well, you wanted a meeting with him. How else do you want me to get a lot of the meeting? I said, okay, okay. He said, now you have to go. He said, you cannot let me down. I said all these things. It took me a while to get this meeting. Now you have to go. Mm-hmm. I said, I will go. I will go. So it was, was my first time in the studio that I ever went even into a studio. Francesca, sorry, I just want to cut across. I mean, before you are in Taurus, how do you make and everything? Um... What was your aim, anyway? You wanted to meet him for what? What was your personal purpose? For well, it, it, it was always my a bit of a dream that I um, get into the music industry to write songs. Okay. It was a dream. Okay, I got it. But it was not something at that time, especially in Switzerland. Yeah. Where there was absolutely nothing, not much, except for a few big names that were there, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, either it was the big names or there was nothing. So I had to choose the <laughs> you big names. To go. Good decision. I went to the studio, and of course he's expecting a very big uh, songwriter from the United States. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, I can't uh, show that uh, my friend lied to him, so I don't know how I'm going to do this. I entered into the studio, and the minute I entered into the studio, he puts um, music on uh, with no lyrics. He wanted me to, by ear, to listen to the melody and fit the lyric into the melody. 
God. Just like that. Wow. Just like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I took a paper and pencil, and I said, okay, I have to do this. So I started writing lyrics into the melody by ear. Okay. The first time ever I wrote a song. <laughs> and then he stops me, and he said, you know, I was just testing you, but to the extreme test, but this is unbelievable what you're doing. And I didn't know what even I was doing while I just stepping <laughs> into the memory. He said, no one can do this yeah. except one person. And I said, who? He said, only David Bowie does this. <laughs> so that's how I started my career. And after that, uh, they asked me to do um, the um, the lyrics to a song for the um, World Music Awards for Monte Carlo for Switzerland, mm-hmm. which received the World Music Award in Monte Carlo in uh, 1992. What was the name of the song, just The song was Was It All in a Dream, okay. sung by Maya Brunner who was a folk artist in Switzerland, very well known, and also in all the gas territories. I mean, she had sold two million albums at the time. Do you have the um, audio of the song, MP3? The audio, uh, yes. It's with a publisher in uh, Switzerland, which I, at the time, uh, I knew nothing about publishing or the music industry. They made me sign um, a contract in Swiss German that I didn't understand with absolutely no date on the contract. And uh, I signed the contract giving away all my publishing rights and um, it, with a contract with no date limit on it. Oh my so God. I've been fighting to get back my publishing on this as I have my own uh, publishing company now. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, the um, Swiss German publisher is just refusing to even respond. Uh, so it's been still still a fight for getting um, even a copy of the, the song to me. Okay. Yes. I am being sent by um, uh, different uh, musicians and songwriters contracts. Mm-hmm. I'm helping a lot of them just on my free time, sometimes uh, friends or whatever. Um, and I'm seeing contracts that, oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing contracts where they say they're going to take, you know, only for production and then in little print is they're taking all their publishing away from them. So I my advice is every contract you have, don't get overwhelmed. You really have to go through it mm-hmm. with every little word before signing anything. Mm-hmm. That's the first mistake I made uh, in my career. And um, after that, I never made it again. And that's why I learned all about the business aspect of the music industry. Mm-hmm. Because it's not only fine to write songs. You really need to know um, what is going on um, with the uh, Business. Okay. Business. The business side. That's great information. Okay, so I got you about all the all about this song. After that song, which way did you move on? <clears throat> Who did you work with? After that, after that, uh, the World Music Awards. Well, that was amazing because it was like beginner's luck. Because the um, on stage with my song and. It was also uh, Phil Collins, Elton John, um, Lisa Stansfield. So it was an amazing thing for me, my first song. Oh. Uh, it was, and it was televised in uh, 80 countries around the world. So that opened a huge door for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, I was, I signed with Sony. As a songwriter with Sony Music Publishing. Okay, and um, can you go then through um, 
through your music career uh, since that time, then Francesca, how many, who did you work like? What was your highlights since then as uh, singers? You uh, well, after that, I worked with the uh, Jermaine Jackson of the Jackson Five. Okay. Um. Uh, it was a fabulous experience. Um, and I uh, then uh, did a project with them to, I was co-producer with Jermaine for the Jackson Family Honor Show. Mm -hmm. um, and I went and stayed uh, at the house with uh, Catherine and Jermaine. Uh, Catherine, who received me so amazingly, wonderful lady. And um, we worked on that project. Uh, and I wrote the scenario for that project and was co-producing with Jermaine Jackson and Michael was... Hmm? Sorry, Francesca, was it just like, was it like stage show? Was it like theatrical show? Was it? What was the idea? Yes, yes, a full, uh, theatrical show, yes, yes, yes. How was it staged? In what, which city? Or was it... Uh, it was supposed to be done uh, in Athens, Greece, mm -hmm. uh, at the... Herod Atticus. Oh. Um, yes, and um, we gave the scenario to Michael, uh, and unfortunately, um, Michael's uh, people at the time, um, they used that same scenario uh, to do a show um, without Jermaine uh, in, in South Korea. Oh, boy. That's very interesting. And of course, it was a big problem because I worked over a year on that, and Jeremy also, and um, and his mom was upset also. But um, they they really liked uh, the whole idea, so they used it in South Korea, but not including uh, all the work we had done. Oh. And uh, yes, so that was a big disappointment. But with Jeremy, I. Uh, I co-wrote uh, I'm Feeling Good Right Now, um, uh, uh, and also he recorded one of my songs with Chris Eaton, which was uh, Strange What Desire Can Do. Cause I'm feeling good right now, my heart is full of love and sunshine, cause baby it's you on my mind, together we have happy good times. Yes. When I wake up in the morning, I got a smile upon my face. Ooh, there ain't nothing to take for granted. I think I can see another day. Ooh, I'm a special kind of lady that needs a special kind of man. And if you're always true and tender, I give you all the love I.
smile upon my face Ooh, there ain't nothing to take for granted I thank God to see another day Ooh, I'm a special kind of lady Then he's a special kind of man And if you all is true and tender started to work with Chris Eaton as well, is it? Uh, uh, yes. Yes, I was already working with Chris Eaton before Jeremy. Um, I was introduced to him by another absolutely amazingly talented writer, um, uh, which was a, a friend at the time, Pam Sheen. Mm -hmm. And uh, she wrote uh, Genie in a Bottle for... Um, Uh, Christina Aguilera. Wow. Yes, she became famous uh, with Christina Aguilera on uh, Genie in a Bottle. Pam. Okay. Yeah. Pam's living in the United States now. She's absolutely amazing, amazing. and talented. And uh, Chris is amazingly talented. Uh, you know, I was very, I was very lucky actually to have the opportunity to work with probably some of the most talented people and renowned people in the music industry. You know this uh, thing about luck, like you, you are blessed, aren't you? You kind of, you brought luck to your music career. What do you think, yes. why did it happen to you? Is that your personality? How did, 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 did you attract this luck, you think, in your life? Well, I'm a very, uh... I'm a very open-hearted person. I love life. I love create, creating. And uh, for me, it was, uh, it was just a natural path. I think it was just meant to be uh, in my road of life. It was just meant to be. Everything came together as if I, I didn't make the effort to run after or to do this or to do that. It was just meant to be, and it was all just there. Yeah. Every time uh, a door was opening, another door, another door, another door, another door. And you see, so, Francesca, sorry to cut across, but looking at you, like I'm, I, I met you, and we met, we met in meeting at the meeting conference. Yes. Actually, you see, you said you was disappointed at that time your, um, with your publishing rights and something didn't happen then with the show. But you didn't get bitter. You didn't get that, ah, oh, it's a hard business. I'm like, the no, no, no. I, I usually very rarely get bitter. Um, I usually just want to even fight more. It's a challenge for me. <laughs> yeah. So everything that, that may not go right or, um, that's something negative. I, I uh, sort of say, okay, is that the way you did? They did it. They will see. I will go even further. <laughs> and I just said, go, keep on going forward. Very good. So you were following the floor anyway. Doors were opening for you, and you were meeting amazing people on the way. And you still do anyway. I know that you do, aren't you? Yes, and uh, also uh, after the Jeremy Jackson uh, singles and the um, uh, production, uh, Jackson Family Honor production that I worked on, after that I, um, uh, I worked with, uh, I, I did songs for Petula Clark. Okay. Um, yeah, Petula Clark. Uh, and she sang the songs at the Olympia in Paris, uh, which was a great success. It was on her Kaleidoscope album with BMG at the time. So that was also a, 
fantastic uh, lever. Pour un peu de soleil, moi, je suis prête à tout. Même claquer tout le monde osait avoir des marins. Je rêve en technique en l'homme du ciel bleu de plage d'or. Je n'en peux plus des nuages gris, de brouillard et de la pluie. And then after that, I met um, uh, Mario Frangulis, which is an amazing um, uh, crossover, classical crossover artist, uh, pop music. And uh, yes, he he, he's born in, uh, he was born in Africa, but he's of Greek origin. And then he went to school in London. Uh, he did the very famous school for arts, for, um, uh, you know, music. And uh, then he started becoming very famous. He sang duets with uh, Pavarotti, with uh, Celine Dion, um, with many big names in the industry. And uh, I wrote... Um, quite a few songs for him uh, in co-writes with Chris Eaton um, that were very successful. If your words have no more voice to comfort me If your hands have no more need to reach for me If your eyes have no It's time for me to say goodbye To look to the horizon For a star up in the sky Let the morning be a witness To the moment this love dies It's time for me to say
Another highlight that I would like to mention, Larissa, is when I was asked to write a song in support of the Big Cat Sanctuary in South Africa called Pantera Africa. It's a song I co-wrote with Chris Eaton and that was then recorded by fabulous recording artist Beverly Knight. A special charity event is being prepared for this soon. We are one, we are one. Another great experience was working with Steve Balsamo and producer Ben Robbins in London. Steve Balsamo, extremely talented artist and songwriter and uh, Grammy Award nominated Ben Robbins uh, for classical charts. Um, we wrote two songs for uh, Il Quinto, South African classical crossover group, whose album Facing a Miracle went to top 10 of eight European countries. I found my dreams When in your arms I found my home What do tears say When the rain falls down What do words mean When there's no Also with David Richards in Switzerland in the, the Mountain Studio. Uh, David Richards, of course, as you know, was um, worked with Freddie Mercury all of his life from the moment he began music. Wow. He also produced Duran Duran, Chris Rea, and um, he worked a lot with Freddie Mercury and David Bowie. I just wanted to ask you about the producers because you met lots of uh, um, very talented producers, producers and famous, uh, including David. Now, do you feel that it's very important for singers um, to find the right producer? Even I know the good producers are more expensive. Will it make big, big difference? You think that's kind of uh, for the music career for, for people? Who... I think it's very important for um, to to be on board with a producer. Uh, usually there, uh, I worked also with a, another very talented and uh, renowned producer, which is George DeAngelis mm -hmm. in London. He mm -hmm. produced uh, Seal, uh, Tina Turner, um, Rod Stewart, Brian Adams, and um, uh, oh, so many of the biggest names. Uh, I think there is, a, there is a, um, of course, this gives a lot to the, um, the song, to work with the producer, uh, to make that track give that feeling and that uh, emotion that is needed. Mm -hmm. And of course, as the industry developed, we used to do just basic demos and that was fine, but then the industry developed um, in the necessity of production, being on the presentation of a song, um, because uh, at one time, the producer of the artist would take that demo and produce it in the style uh, that he wanted for his artist. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, uh, it was like you have to present the song already produced, yeah. But that was that was really limiting our songs to specific markets. Whereas before, with a demo, uh, that song could be made into an R&B song, a country song, a uh, rock song, uh, depending on the on the producer of the artist. Oh, right. Whereas now, 
we presented already with the de defined production styles. Mm -hmm. So there, um, we are limiting the market. But uh, the record labels want that already existing. Yeah. Um, so it, it, there was no other option than to work with producers. Mm -hmm. um, of course, um, uh, production uh, is, um, is an art of its own, and the producers that I worked with were extremely talented because they had to know all aspects of writing songs. Mm -hmm. Not only the music, the melody, the lyrics, it was the performance of the artist. The producer, the most important thing, work of the producer was in order to know how to produce the vocal. The vocal is the most important aspect of a production. Okay. Because, I mean, it's that performance that vocal that will make or break a song. That's why I always say it's the artist that makes the song at the end. Mm -hmm. Yes, great song, great artist, you have uh, uh, double the benefit. Mm -hmm. But if you have a great song without having a great artist, well, no, not your well. song doesn't mean anything anymore. Okay. And if you have and, you, and some people have terrible songs, but they have such an artist performing on it that the song becomes much more than it actually was. Yeah, personality. There's so, a personality. Of course, personality, emotion, the tone of the voice, the feeling, the, the way it's performed, the way you see the artist move, the way you see them express themselves. That is the secret okay. to yes. creating the song. Mm. And a lot of the new producers, the younger producers, okay, do great jobs on tracks, but they don't know how to produce a vocal. No. And if you don't know how to produce a vocal, well, then, then you don't have you are not a hundred percent what I call a producer. Great. A producer is not just a track. It's also producing vocal, knowing how to enhance that vocal, how to give that artist the best effect, because the vocal is the passion. It's the vehicle to making that song a success. I've come alive and this is real You changed everything, you changed the way I feel And every part of you is a place I wanna go The world I wanna know Well I never planned it, not like this no, and I never dreamed it, but here it is, here comes the love, here comes the love, here comes the love, here comes the love, here comes the love. The, one of the biggest fantastic artists I work with, Valeria from Russia. Yeah, she is great. Of course, she's one of the icons. <laughs> she's a 
an amazing person, amazing artist, very professional, um, extremely brilliantly smart and uh, amazing. She's a fantastic. I had one of the greatest experiences working with Valeria. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, she was amazing. An amazing person, an amazing artist. publishing company and why did you decide to do that? I decided to to create my own publishing company because I saw that giving your uh, first of all I learned that from uh, the Jacksons. The Jacksons always said and Jermaine always said the Jacksons never give their publishing to anyone. Right. So I started dwelling on this comment, mm -hmm. and uh, when I saw, um, when I was signed to with Sony Publishing and then another publishing company in UK, independent, uh, great independent, uh, one of the, the number one independent publishing companies worldwide, I saw that, that frankly, there was a big mess. Mm -hmm. In the collections, in in uh, uh, actually um, everybody, I guess, has their own interest at heart. So I decided it was about time I put my own interest at heart. 
And so I said, I'm taking all this into my hands. I want the control of all my works because also another reason for that was when I uh, was a writer with Sony, um, I was able to place, I was doing probably all the work mm -hmm. uh, and, the, and the placements mm -hmm. because they were not doing much for me. But um, I placed the song, I sent a song at that time with whom I met was Andrea Bocelli, manager, uh, Charlie, and um, they, uh, Katerina Cavalli of, uh, if I remember her last name well, of Sugar. Mm -hmm. And they called me and they said, we absolutely want this song for Andrea Bocelli. I was signed to Sony at the time. Okay. And, um, but uh, we will even pay a, a, a big sum to keep it on hold for us. And, uh, but we want publishing on it. Mm -hmm. Of course, as I was signed under contract to Sony, I go to Sony, I said, they want publishing. This is a huge opportunity for me. Mm -hmm. And the person at Sony, who was the one that I left Sony because of that person, um, but I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad I did. Yes. Um, yes, he said to me, no way, we will not give any publishing to them. I said, but I'm losing a great opportunity here. I'm losing on making money here. Mm -hmm. I'm losing on uh, uh, my career here. Okay. Bocelli is going to be singing my song. They said, we don't care. We don't care. Yeah, you are into this they not look wasn't looking after your interests at the end of the day. They wasn't looking after no. you not at all. It was it was a bit of a stubbornness mm -hmm. to show we are in power here, we are controlling your songs here. We I said, huh. So I go back to them and I said, Hey guys, um Sony will not give you any publishing. And they come back to me and they say, Francesca. Even though your song is number one on our list, mm -hmm. even though we know that this will be a hit, if we don't get publishing on this, then we just go to the second song on the list. Yeah, because in any case, Bocelli will sell anything. That's true. At that time, it was really big, That's really huge. I know. And they said, we're sorry. No. And not only did I lose the the, the the big amount they were giving for the hold, but I lost this amazing opportunity okay. and also the royalties because Bocelli was giving concerts left and right mm -hmm. that Sony made me lose. So then I went to mm, fabulous lawyer I had in London um, who just got me released from the contract, and that's when I decided actually to begin my own publishing. Yes. Francesca, you sound you sound woman for one woman, we say in Ireland. You know that this is a very funny saying in Ireland. You sound woman for one woman. It means that you can do everything. You're beautiful, you business minded, and you create I mean like you package all together. Oh, well, thank you. That makes me blush, Larissa. You are too, actually. You know yourself. You're my hero. You're somebody I would love to follow. That's what you are for me. It's why I want to talk to you. Thank you. That touches my heart very much. Really? Thank you. really appreciate it. And I really love that I was able to record two of your songs. So I'm hopefully we will continue to work together. Well, it's my pleasure too for you. Uh, Larissa, because on uh, on uh, only my heart knows you you did just an amazing job. Tell us then before all this disaster lockdown happened, what was your recent project? One is uh, um, Georgie K, which I love. We co-wrote uh, uh, three songs together with uh, really great producer Darren Darren Mark. Um, 
uh, we did a fabulous collaboration, uh, amazing songs, and the one is going to be released soon. favorite songs with uh, uh, Only My Heart Knows, I think. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, also uh, working on some uh, with a new artist, French artist, um, that we are co-writing uh, songs for the K-pop market in Korea. Mm -hmm. And um, she has an amazing voice, amazing voice, Annie, Annie Riyad. And then uh, Amino, uh, Nuzi, Idris, um, the song is soon to be released with him, mm -hmm. uh, with video. Um, also, I have a project with uh, Vinny Vero in the United States, in New York, uh, with a really top group um, of an album that's coming out, compilation album, in hopefully this... Um, Paul, uh, really well-known group. I don't know if he wants me to say it yet, but they're very well-known with very big hits uh, all over the world. And um, actually, uh, I put um, one of their English song hits, two of their English song hits into uh, French. Since lockdown happened, what do you think as the very high profile professional in music business, music industry, what do you think will happen to us? Everybody's so scared, saying oh, there's probably no live music anymore. We're not getting any music and any payments from streaming anymore. How is it affecting you? And what do you think is the future, Francesca? I think that the music industry is probably, was one of the strongest industries, even compared to arms industry or whatever it was. 
huge industry, mm -hmm. which slowly has been destroyed. And I must say, as will many industries, by a very um, corporate in, uh, power in the world today. Okay. Today, corporations in the music industry are making more money than ever before. And through us, the songwriters. Okay. We are the backbone of the industry. Yeah. We create the merchandise for this industry. Without the songwriters, the performers, the musicians, the producers, there is no industry. No. But unfortunately, they have found ways, these corporations, to make more money than ever before. And we are getting peanuts. We still have the concerts. And here you go, and now even the concerts are taken away. That's true. I am saying, the money doesn't disappear in thin air. Mm -hmm. Money always finds a way from one pocket into the other. And it's been taken from our pocket, and it's going more in corporations' pockets. As will many industries happen the same. Mm -hmm. And the people working in these industries, what do they do? Can they continue just on passion, just on... Uh, the love of their work. They can continue, but we have to eat. We have to to, to yes, children. We have Everybody to. has to eat. Everybody has to. They have families. Cannot do this. No. But today, if you look, music major labels are making more money than ever, and everybody is blaming the distributors, to iTunes, Amazon. No. The rep. Music labels are the ones that have made contracts with these distributors mm -hmm. to be able to make the most profit. What is the, in our power, musicians' power, as the um, collective industry, what can we do? Do you think, can we do anything at all about this? Well, first of all, I'm hoping that concerts will return. Mm -hmm. And second of all, the only thing we can do about it is say, hey, we're going to stop recording, stop writing songs. What are you going to do? Where are you going to go without our merchandise? We have to fight all levels because uh, they are uh, counting on the fact that we are have passionate about our work yeah. and the fact that we love our work and the fact that uh, we don't want to stop writing songs. Yes. But hey, uh, 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 we want to, to make money off of our property. Somebody is taking our property, mm -hmm. making money off of it and putting it in their pockets, but not in ours. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely amazing talking to you, such an inspirational person and in all fields. And beautiful. Thank you. Well, I, thank you so much. Well, I'm going to, first of all, I, I'm, thank you very much for taking the time and doing this for me. And um, I'm, go, I'm going to show it to as many people as I can that I know, I know that many people will connect because it's a spiritual, it's a business, it's all in our interview today. Yes. <laughs> I, yes. All the best. I never stop be creative and continue your beautiful songs and um, I hope I will work with you more and um, we will stay friends forever, Francesca. Yeah, of course, Larissa. That would be also an honor for me to know you. It's an honor for me. You are wonderful. You are just amazing also. Amazing personality, amazing artist. Thank and you. I thank you so much.